Welcome to Bar Camp. Once again, my name is Chuck Palm. I'm with IPN, officially known as the Internet Podcasting Network. However, we're going to be IPN, the Web Broadcasting Network, at the end of the year. Uh, the reason we're changing this is that not that podcasting is dying or becoming less relevant. Yeah, it is. Look at it. <laughs> no, really. Uh, it's that podcasting is too narrow-minded. Everybody thinks you have to have an iPod and you have to be on this network and you have to be in iTunes and I'm tired of preaching that story after four years of doing this We were one of the first companies to professionally podcast business messages or marketing messages for our clients Web broadcasting has changed and the reason it changed is bandwidth is more readily available Technology has caught up with it mobile devices little tiny laptops portable units uh, anything that you can connect to the web with on your smartphone. These devices are changing my industry every month. As you see a new smartphone with 4G and, and all these other technologies coming out, we have to adapt. And part of the way we are doing that is by strapping things like multiple modems together from different networks so that we have more bandwidth. Anybody remember the days of muxing? Ooh, look at the kid. <laughs> Sorry, I, I, I dye my gray out so everybody knows. <laughs> the, the point is, muxing, the, you're, you're strapping your connection together gives you three, four, six times the bandwidth that you would have on one normal cellular connection. So that's how we're doing high def broadcasts over the web live. That's the first time we can stream live video that way. Uh, ESPN's using the technology. Livestream.com is a place you can do some research on it. We love it. The problem is you get into some legalities. And part of the legalities that we found are they're really a, um, a throwback to the 60s again. <laughs> In the 60s, people used to buy radio time to get performers on the air. And if you were a rock star and wanted to have your album go platinum, you paid the right DJs in the right towns enough payola money, which is where that mm -hmm. phrase came from, and they would get you on the air, and they would make you famous, right? Tony doesn't know anything about that. <laughs> Sorry. So when that happened, there were some rules that had to be put out to stop this illegal activity. And the record industry answered by really nailing down their their legal issues for copyright. And part of that was, okay, we want to guarantee that our performers get paid for their creativity. Okay, you, all, you, you realize that that's where copyrights come from, is that a creator of some material that is used for print or broadcast medium wants to be paid every time somebody consumes that medium, right? Whether you buy a book, you're paying for the book. You buy a magazine, you pay for a subscription, right? These are the the types of things that we're still dealing with in the age of the internet when everyone in this room is a publisher who doesn't use Twitter in here who doesn't use Twitter one guy <laughs> one guy bless you sir you know? oh. thank you oh two okay well you know I figured you did but I <laughs> and there's a joke right there's on the cue there's a joke right on cue <laughs> You just started, but okay, brilliant. See, that's the point. Uh, in all, all honesty, publishers, by definition of the FCC, you're publishers. You're publishing content every second now. Yes, sir. In all honesty, yeah. I just signed up on Facebook because when I was doing my bar camp <laughs> registration, they said, "What's your Facebook ID?" Yeah, and I stopped there and I went and generated a Facebook. Good man. And came back in and finished. See, my you're a publisher. Stop now and you won't get it. That's there. right. Yeah. <laughs> Just learn to say no. Okay. <laughs> I'm making the point that every one of you now owns material that you have created that is unique, that you may profit from for the end of time, according to our current legal structure. All right. Number one disclaimer, I'm saying this on tape so everyone cannot dispute the fact that I say I am not a lawyer, I am not giving legal advice, I do not understand copyright law, I am just a publisher like the rest of you. And I have lawyers that tell me this every week. You can't publish that. You can't publish this. You can't copy that. You can't use that material. And the reason we can't do that is because of the 60s and the payola and the way that radio stations and the lawyers fought it out so that publishing material was compensated. Okay? And believe me, Gutenberg wasn't the first guy to print stuff and plagiarize. All right? 
there were a lot of people who were printing material that had already been printed and they were profiting from it. And back in the days, they were also breaking copyright law. All right, so it happens every single day. Does that make it not right? Does it make it uh, you know, legal? No, it's probably still illegal to reproduce material without the author's permission, right? That's what we face with all uh, every day. Fair use, I love this term. It's, there's nothing fair about it. Um, fair use was a way of answering the industry's request for an artist to be able to get some sort of exposure when their stuff was played on the air or when it was reused, okay? So as a consumer, I don't get fair use. That's why I don't think it's all that fair. I, I, I buy an album, I can listen to it. I can maybe have a couple people over for a party and listen to it, right? But I can't be a DJ and play that album at the sock hop. That's against the law, unless I have a license to play that music in a public venue, okay? So even party DJs were breaking the law back in the day. There's a lot of very gray areas about, about usage of copyrighted materials. And I'm trying to make an example because every time you guys pick a picture off of somebody else's website and use it, <laughs> chances are if somebody snapped that photograph or the artist created that picture, you're breaking the law. If when an artist creates something, it's instantly copyrighted. They don't even have to. They don't even have to register it with anybody. Right. As a creator, you own the original copyright. Okay? That's what I mentioned before, by the way. You create something, instant copyright. You own it, you don't have to register it with anybody. You just have to prove that you did it if it's ever challenged, okay? And by the way, how do you prove something that's digitally created on a certain date when I can manipulate that? You know what I mean? It's very tough to say fair use is fair. <laughs> Thanks, Jordan. Um, Lucas is probably over there. Hi. Hi. <laughs> that's fine. Perfect. Plug in that, his camera. Hi, Jackie. <laughs> Come on in, y'all. I'm just, I'm just going to wrap this up because I know he's got the 3 o'clock. So I wanted to say that fair use is something, right now, if you Google it today, you'll get a bunch of different, different definitions, but believe it or not, Wikipedia got it really close this time. So look up fair use in Wikipedia, but then look at everything else on the first page of Google about current fair use and how that applies. For example, I'm a talk show guy. Okay, I listen to them, love them, I participate in them, and I also host a talk show online. So, yeah, I'm in the world. I, I really love the spoken word and communicating with people. When you are a talk show person and you have creative material that you're publishing every day, you may want to spice up your show with a little music clip from somebody else. And over the air, you used to be able to do that. You'd have what is it, 45 seconds, 60 seconds, I think? You go beyond 60 seconds, you pay royalty. Just like that, right? Most songs are 3, 10, 3, 20 second, 3 minutes, 20 seconds long, on average for airplay. <laughs> if you use anything up to that first minute, that's fair use. Everybody knows that song, you know, who hasn't heard Sweet Home Alabama a million times on the air, but you can't play that beyond 60 second mark if you're a talk show person promoting your content, see? because I'm illegally using that information for my gain, because I publish content that I profit from. Now, if I'm a nonprofit organization, I fill out all my paperwork, and I go through all the tax hassles, and I create content for free that's going to benefit a charity or another institution, maybe you can get around that if you have good lawyers. I'm telling you now, <laughs> the, the, the world is going to change, and it's gonna change very fast, and I'm really proud to be a part of that. We, we have coalitions that are taking care of that. Adam is one of them. There are other online organizations that you can join to learn more about how to use copyrighted material on the internet. I'm asking every one of you to do your own homework, take this home as your, your, your assignment for the night, and look up fair use and understand how it applies, because in about three to six months, there's going to be a few Supreme Court cases that are going to change all that. And if you're really active and you want to learn about that, it will benefit everybody in here that's a publisher, that creates content, that tweets, that, pu that puts stuff on Facebook, that posts videos to their website, that produces music and, and publishes it somewhere. So everybody has the opportunity to have a say in where this world is going. Fair use is just the first one to, to reach that threshold and try to jump the transom, as it were. 
because we're going to see more and more copyright issues on the internet. In fact, you can just look up digital copyright. It's a nightmare. <laughs> the one that I use very frequently that I'm, I'm going to end this on right now is called Creative Commons. I really, really, really suggest you all look up creativecommons.org if you're publishing any kind of material and learn what that does for you and how it protects you as an artist, as a performer, as a publisher, as any kind of producer of content online. This is my whole world now. All I do is live to produce content online. And Creative Commons allows you to maintain your original copyright and yet share it with other people so that they can give you credit. That's the benefit of this. There's no legal rights currently in the United States to say, as a producer, I can copyright my material and I can lend it to you if I want to as the, as the owner, but if I engage a lawyer in a record company, they own me. They own all my creative, right? And they can't publish, I'm sorry, they can publish to their heart's content, but I can't republish, I can't give you permission, I can't sell it. I have to use that legal service through the record companies, through the uh, movie industry, through the television industries. All of them have their own. I just picked on the record industry because I knew that that one's coming up again really soon. So as you see this, Creative Commons is one. I think it was Adam and other coalitions online. Uh, make sure you're aware as content producers that you all have a legal obligation to your content, that you can profit from it, and that you can share it. And Creative Commons is a way to do that. Thanks for attending. My name's Chuck.